Welcome to the Autosportradio.com 2020 show. We are once again live, or not live, but uh, recording from the Grant King Race Shops in Indianapolis. And if and when anything opens where people can mingle, you need to come down here and take a look at this place. It is a working museum. Some of the cars in here were built before a lot of you people were even alive. It's, it's amazing the cars they have on display. And eventually things will open and you'll get to see them. Today's show is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, the SVRA, and McGilvery's Pub and Eatery and Speedway. If uh, you have a dental problem, and everybody loves to go see the dentist, well, I'm going to tell you who the best one around is and one of the highest rated, if not the highest rated in the state. That's the Indy Dental Group. Indy 500 veteran Dr. Jack Miller and his wife, Dr. Liz Lewis, have a spectacular practice. Many of the people that I, in fact, all the people I've re recommended to it have come back and said, wow, they got great people, they treat you right, and if you need surgery, Dr. Jack does that. Call them, make an appointment, check it out, 317-846-6125. And if you're like me and seem to have an hourly problem with your computer, we have a new computer guy. It's called A-plus Affordable Computer Doctor. And he's a doctor because when I was a kid, doctors made house calls. Steve Free is a doctor makes house calls if necessary. So give them a call, tell them your problem. Need be, you can come by and fit, take care of it. His number is 317-328-0766. If you ever wonder what it'd be like to drive your favorite car on your favorite track, from dirt midgets at the Chili Bowl to Formula One at Nuremberg Ring, Indy Simulation can put you in the driver's seat of their Sim Experience Full Motion Race Simulator. If you ever wanted to try this and see what it's like to be on these tracks, this is the place to go. Take your choice of over 160 cars and tracks in iRacing, the same simulation professional drivers use to race their real world rivals and learn new tracks and stay sharp in between races. Visit IndySim.com, that's IndySim.com, and book uh, today to book your free demonstration ride. Once you've done that, you'll want to come back. It's great. That's IndySim. Dot com. If you are interested in taking a ride in a two-seater in a racetrack, you can do that by going to IndyRacingExperience.com, find a date that they're running and it's available for you, and sign up. You'll love it. And in the promo box, put DK1, you get a 50% discount. Or you can call the office at number 317-243-7171, talk to Shonda, mention my name, you get the discount. Not sure why they do that, but they're nice enough. Is it time to renew your insurance for your home, your car, or your commercial property? Do what most of us have done. Call Mike Pardee at VP Insurance. They're located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. He can help you out. You'll find you get better coverage for less money. He's done it for me, and he's done it for all of us. So give him a call. The number is 317-248-0070. Tell him what you need. He'll help you. 317-248-0070. And if you're into vintage racing or the back into the Trans Am, which is making a great comeback, you need to go to the svra.com and subscribe to Speed Tour Magazine. It's a great magazine, great pictures, and it tells you if you're going to an event where the good restaurants and good things to see are. First class ma magazine. So go to svra.com and click on and subscribe to Speed Tour Magazine. And while you're there, check the schedule, see where their next event is. And they're now on MAV TV on Sunday mornings, by the way. If you've wanted a vintage car, you have one you need it restored, this is the place to come, the Grant King Race Shops. They can help you with anything. Give them a call, tell them what you're looking for, what you got, what you want to have done to it, and they can help you out. The number is 317-820-3595. Now my guest is the gentleman who is the uh, Vice President and General Manager of Worldwide Technology Raceway in St. Louis or Madison, Illinois, actually, but across the creek from St. Louis. Uh, we were just talking about the new golf course that uh, Curtis has taken over, and I said, how much do you play? He said, I haven't. So it tells you that he is very, very busy, and of course, with things going on the way they are, you don't know from one day to the next what's happening. We're going to find out. I want to please welcome the vice president of the place, Chris Blair. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for your time. Hey, Don. It's always a pleasure. How are things going? Are things rocky over there like they are most places? I mean, as you are aware, Mid-Ohio was canceled last Friday for this coming weekend. So are you having the same problems over there? 
actually here in uh, uh, St. Louis, uh, well, actually in Madison, Illinois, we started working back in uh, April with all the racetracks in the state. Uh, we founded the uh, Illinois Motorsports Coalition and we presented some plans to the state and uh, took a unified approach to, for all the tracks to work together. Um, and by doing so, we've been able to host events here since uh, the end of May. We started out with participant only events and then we moved into spectator events starting in June, uh, I believe it's the second week of June. And we've had some, uh, some very good shows, some great attendance. Uh, we're working with everybody that we need to be working with. Uh, you know, we're still limited on our capacity of what we can have, uh, you know, we're, but uh, uh, we're really emphasizing and playing uh, along with what needs to be done to uh, maintain outdoor recreation. That's what we are, we're an outdoor recreation venue. Uh, the CDC encourages uh, people to get outside and do things. We're trying to do our part to give them an option for people to get outside. So the events we've had, uh, primarily on the drag strip, we also we did have a very successful uh, SCCA uh, National Hoosier Tour event a few weeks back. Uh, they've done very well on the participant side, and as well as with the spectators who did turn out. And everybody's cooperating with the, the policies and the rules that we're working through. And we're, we're uh, evaluating things on a weekly basis on what we're requiring our fans and uh, participants to do. And so far things have gone very well. So we're optimistic. Uh, I know the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is saying when they run the event on the 23rd, hopefully, that uh, food at the concession stands will be boxed. Are you doing the same thing or do you have concession stands open where I can get a hot dog and a beer? We do have our concession stands up and we're sticking with a strict policy of everything being pre-wrapped. So all of our foods are pre-wrapped uh, so that uh, that way the, the, the whole process is it's a more sanitary process in case there was somebody who did have those concerns. Uh, you can still get a beer or we're offering our uh, uh, 32 ounce uh, draft beer uh, during uh, our drag racing events. It's going pretty well. We sold quite a few of those a couple of weeks ago and uh, over this past weekend, we had the NMCA, NMRA, uh, Super Bowl Street Legal Drag Racing. Um, and I was just looking at some of the numbers, not only for our permanent concession stands, but our outside vendors, and they did very well. And, and everybody's uh, stepping up and doing what they need to do to uh, stay open and do it the right way. Well, I just talked to a guy who was telling me that he saw, <clears throat> just came out the uh, viewership, television viewership of baseball games and I think, I don't know if it was this weekend or last week, I can't remember. But oddly enough, the one that drew the most viewers was IndyCar. Baseball with people watching and you're looking at the pitcher throwing to the batter and you have cutouts behind it. It really isn't tripping anybody's trigger. <coughs> and I think some of the other professional sports are going to find they have, going to have a serious, in my opinion, a serious problem. But IndyCar doesn't have that problem. Everybody cooperates, the drivers cooperate. They, they don't, you don't see anybody kneeling. I mean, they're all respectful. Uh, and of course, they love it when the fans are there because it's nice to do a wheelie and jump up on top of the car and see somebody cheering for you as opposed to nobody. But uh, uh, I'm sure you've heard from the fans that they're, you know, they want to see live action and you are providing that. And, and do you uh, have X number of tickets you'll sell and you sell out? Yeah, we are going to closely monitor uh, the situation so that we do stick within the, uh, the guidelines on uh, the overall capacity. And we're working on some creative uh, ways of arranging the seating so that, that we do maintain the distancing. Um, so that we are, uh, you know, in the past you could go online and you could click on a particular seat on the, the screen and, and pick the, the designated seat. Well, unfortunately, that's one of the challenges we are faced with. So what we're doing with our fans is they are able to uh, go online and pick the seating section they want to be in, uh, the price level seating section. And then what we're doing, we're uh, going on a policy of approximately every 10 days, we're going to take a look and see how many were sold in that particular section and then arrange a seating diagram and assign the seats so that we can get uh, the fans that uh, want to be in those sections taken care of. Uh, but we, you know, we are looking at every angle of what we need to be doing here. There is a possibility that we could uh, reach our capacity early. Uh, one of the great things that's happening now is with the event spread being two events in one weekend, that uh, uh, should take care of anybody who only wants to go for one day. They will be able to have an opportunity that they can go to the race. And uh, 
we're opening up the sections in terms one and two, that entire structure is gonna be available to everyone, which that hasn't always been the case in the past. And you know, and before our goal is to get as many fans in here and cram them in and make the grandstands look uh, as packed as possible. So for us, it's kind of a complete reversal of what we've always been trained to do. Now we have to figure out ways of getting the fans in here and spreading them out as much as possible so it doesn't look full. So it's uh, it's kind of a challenge, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get through it. We're gonna have a great week end of racing them and uh, any fan who wants to go I just encourage them to buy your tickets early um, you know and, and the way things uh, evolve and change you never know there might be opportunities for additional as we get closer it all depends um, on what's going on locally here we've been very fortunate in that when, when all this first started uh, our governor was one of the toughest on everything when it came to this and we you know early on uh, he was really drawing a line in the sand on any type of events. Since that time, he's gone to a uh, regional approach uh, where each region controls uh, the different areas and the numbers and what they can do and can't do. Uh, and so the good thing for us is that we have a good working relationship with a lot of our local officials and the health department here. So we're, uh, we're being up front. We're working with them early on and making sure that we're, uh, we're doing everything right. And we've also, in, as I mentioned earlier, that Illinois Motorsports Coalition, we put together a package of uh, information that we shared with the chief of staff for the Illinois Department of Public Health and the feedback we received not only from him, but also from the uh, Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic, Economic Opportunity was that our plan was one of the best plans they've ever seen. They said they actually wished other industries would have taken as much time and thought in what was presented. And that was just a, because it was a group effort of all the racetracks in the state, uh, from road courses to dirt tracks to, to short ovals. Uh, we all worked together to come up with a well thought out plan. And so far, everybody's working together to stick to that plan. Well, you know, it's it's a situation that I'm sure you never thought of. I sure heck had never thought this would happen. And it's it's amazing to me that, you know, the fans seem to understand it. If they can't get in, now there's, there's going to be some restrictions at the Speedway. And one of the uh, uh, people that might get cut out is me because they said they're looking at uh, not allowing 60 and over or over 60 into the media center and a PR th type thing. So since I've got that beat by 20 some years, I, I haven't heard that yet, but I, I, I've heard that that's happening. So it, it may be that I'll be watching uh, on NBC Sports Gold. But, you know, it, motorsports are, are a strange thing. The, the, the participants aren't anything like other professional sports at all. I mean, they take their sport serious. Lee, they they appreciate the fans and know that they're what they do is what helps bring fans in. So they're usually very easy. In fact, for the most part, in all the years I've been around, they're very, especially IndyCar, very easy to work with, very helpful. So, and it also turns out on occasion that the vice presidents and general managers of facilities take the time to come and talk to me. So everything works out well in the thing. And I think it's important people understand what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it. If I wanted to order a tickets how, how do i do it where do i go you simply go to our website which is uh, www.tracewaycom uh, backslash tickets so you can go through the ticket uh, location there or feel free to call our ticket office uh, and ask for taylor uh, and our, our number is 618-215-8888 and uh, you need to go through the general uh, switchboard or you can just punch in 106 that's taylor's extension uh, she's a Indiana girl from uh, the Indianapolis area that loves the sport. I think her, uh, what is her grandfather is actually one of the yellow shirts out at the Speedway. So oh. she's uh, she's one of us, uh, loves the sport, and uh, she enjoys taking those phone calls. She does a great job of trying to help everybody get what they need. Um, so, you know, phone lines are open, and we're actually expanding all of our ticket hours, working later uh, shifts in the evenings and uh, so that we can get people, if they want to call after hours, they can call after hours or they can easily go online to, to do their ticket purchase. Uh, are, are you uh, still on NHRA schedule this year? We sure are. Okay. Uh, October 2nd through the 4th is our NHRA national event. And uh, uh, again, we're uh, evaluating, taking everything one day at a time with that one also, but uh, I'm pretty optimistic that as we move forward, we'll be in good shape. Well, it seems to me that, you know, they have the same problem you and everybody else has of, of the spacing of fans. And I've also noticed in some events, not necessarily IndyCar particularly, 
because at Iowa, I thought, gee, it doesn't look like, but they sold every ticket they had, were allowed to sell, presto. So that bodes well. But I've seen some of the other events you look and there's that can have spectators. There's nobody there. It's not, and that happens here. Uh, my wife and I go out to eat once or twice a week, and we love it. The places we go are big, and sometimes we walk in, we double the co- crowd. A lot of people are scared to death to come out yet, but I think you get a sporting event where you're outside, I think they'll be there. Well, that's one of the things that I've noticed, too. Uh, I started going back to live events uh, as a spectator um, Mother's Day weekend when uh, uh, I-55 Speedway in Peebley, Missouri, which is about 30 minutes from us, uh, Bob Sargent, who promotes races throughout the Midwest, put on a dirt late model show there. And uh, our staff here from the racetrack, Worldwide Technology Raceway, we went down there to help out because we wanted to get as far out in advance as we could on figuring out what steps were going to uh, need to be taken to host events. So we, our staff helped out with the temperature screenings and distributing hand sanitizer, all the stuff that you needed to do. And uh, so that kind of gave us a little bit of a head start to understand the the way the fans were thinking as it came to this. And the one thing that we noticed is that the people who are attending the live events, and you know, that was back in May and it, it continues now, is that people are uh, so appreciative and of the fact that they're attending the event. Uh, in a lot of the states, a lot of people are going because they don't know for sure when the rules are gonna change again. So they wanna make sure they seize the opportunity. Um, and if you take a look at what they've been doing, the different events the World of Outlaws have been having, I've attended uh, numerous Outlaws events this year because they were one of the leaders when it got out, uh, getting out in front of the, uh, the screening process for the fans. Uh, I was just at Road America on Saturday. I drove up there for their IMSA event. And uh, the, you know, while the paddock is restricted, you can't get in like you could in the past, the fans that were there were having a great time. And the things that I noticed is that, you know, the, the folks there at Road America did a fantastic job with all their signage that they had out uh, and uh, the screening process. Uh, the, and the fans were doing a good job on their part, too. Everybody is aware. Everybody's working together. They understand that in order for us to have events, we all need to work together. Um, and Wisconsin had been fairly uh, open up until this past week when their governor put a new mask uh, rule in place for anybody indoors. But from what I was seeing, I was in their, uh, the gift shop, I was at the concession areas. People are wearing the mask, they understand that they need to do it, and uh, it, it's working out very well. That's some the same policies we're gonna take here. We're just encouraging fans to, to wear their mask while they're in the, the midways and around the concession areas and when they're going to and from their seats. Once they've sat down with their group and they have the proper distancing, then you know, you, unless you just feel like you really have to, you know, we're not gonna push the issue. Uh, we want people to be able to enjoy it. And uh, I think everybody will, in order to make this happen, everybody's going to work together. I think it's going to be just fine. Well, I've gotten a couple of emails from people that said, what is this? I got to wear a mask to enter the speedway? And I said, that's the rule. What if I don't? You'll find out how you, the gate you came in, how you can go out, too. <laughs> oh, they're not going to change. I said, don't be so sure about that. I think Roger will be very like you are doing. You know, you, this is what we require. And you do it as long as you do it, you don't care. Yeah. But it's a different world. I, mean, I, you know, the only time I ever wore a mask before was when I was working and I was painting or something. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, or if you were robbing a bank, then you probably would. Well, yeah, that was the other time. Uh, no, you know, that's one of the things that, and I've been all over the board in my thought on this this whole thing, uh, because, you know, I take a look at some of the things that we see in the number reporting, and, and there's just so many things that are out there that, you know, who knows what to believe. That's uh, the problem. That's part of the problem. But what I've looked at is, okay, it's as simple as wearing a mask. And if this makes everybody happy, if this gets everybody to calm down a little bit, if this is what we can do to get this and put it behind us so that in 2021, when we open the gates, we don't have any more of this to deal with, this BS is behind us, and then it's worth that. You know, to know that just to, you know, when I go to Lowe's or Home Depot or any store like that, you know, I'm putting it on before I go in. Do I like it? No. Will it, will it make everybody shut up and let us move on? Yes. So that's kind of the attitude that I'm taking to. If it's hopefully this is a short-term solution for the the problem that we can move forward with our lives. Well, I was listening to a guy the other night, and he said, you know, what I do is I cut a little hole in the mask, and I drink my beer through a straw. <laughs> well, I got news for you. I tried that. I was plastered by the second beer. 
It's easier to hey, put yeah. the mask up and drink it. <laughs> Maybe there's um, a positive to this. It saves you beer money that way. Yeah, I know. It's, so now uh, uh, Curtis has taken over management or, or running the golf course that's right next to you. How is that working out? Is that getting a lot of play? I would assume they are. I hear around here the golf courses are, are crowded. Yeah, it was uh, it was a little bit challenging at first because from uh, they they were encouraging people to get outside and do things, but then they had the golf courses closed for the month of April. Uh -huh. uh, things reopened in May. Uh, yeah, as that was the logic. I couldn't understand. Okay, you're golfing and you're by your you know with your group that rode to the trail, rode to the course together. So I don't know why you couldn't play it. Uh, starting in early May, they reopened all the golf courses. And uh, Gateway National, which is just outside, turns three and four of our property. Right. It's, packed. Uh, it's a beautiful golf course, and uh, they've been packed ever since. So it's doing very well. And uh, uh, Walters Golf Management, the company that runs that course, runs a lot of other golf courses in the area. And uh, they've been having a, a great year. Uh, the, you know, they've had to have some hoops they've had to jump through in order to do things. And but now it's it's working out very well for them, and it's, you're seeing more and more people who are getting out and golfing. You're seeing more people doing outdoor activities such as fishing and things like that. So uh, we're seeing some uh, some positives around here. Well, there's a golf course outside turns three and four. I mean to tell me you can't get on a on a golf cart and lay your clubs down on the back and drive over there. So I got to go check the racetrack and disappear and play nine. Come on. Now. <laughs> Uh, this makes it even worse. I actually live on a golf course that's managed by the same management company, and I haven't played it in five years. And that's just because we're, we're so busy and, uh, you know, we have, keep a lot of weird hours. I've got a lot of my friends that would have to play on them, but uh, I'm hoping soon that well, when things will slow down, we can get to it a little bit. When you started out your career out of school, mm -hmm. did you want – is this something you – wanted to do this is what you're set your sight on i want to run a track i want to be in management of racing or, or manage a racetrack uh well like most people growing up i wanted to be the next rick mirrors and then the reality of uh, what it takes and uh the financial uh obligations i'm not pretty enough to be the poster child for a uh, brand that would want to sponsor me and uh uh, I soon realized it was uh, it was going to be a challenge to get there, and I was just I just knew I wanted to be in racing, whatever way, however that happened. And that's what that was my goal. Was just I wanted to be able to uh, have a career in a sport that I love, and uh, you know that's one of those things. If I was dealing uh, with the stuff that we're having to deal with right now, and in anything but racing, I would have been miserable, and I would have uh, been sitting at home for a few months, and everybody was was quarantined, but. You know, even through all that, uh, you know, I got up, I was here at the track usually six days a week during the, the quarantine period because this is, this is my happy place. You know, when you can get, when you can get up and go to a racetrack every single day, I mean, that, that's the perfect scenario. I love it. And uh, so that, that's, you know, it's good that I have a job that I love. Otherwise, I probably would have been miserable for a few months. But, <laughs> and that was one of the things that I told Curtis, our owner, uh, while we were putting this motorsports coalition together and putting all these plans and everything together, I felt like uh, every single day we were just thrashing and working hard, but at the end of the day, we had nothing to show for it. It's like we were doing a whole, jumping through a whole lot of hoops and nothing was materializing. But then after a short period of time, it all kind of came together. And uh, that, that first uh, burnout at the drag strip and that first lap over there on the road course, the weekend that happened, it was just a sense of relief. It really felt good to, to know that the work we had put in, we were able to get the racetrack going again. I have so many friends in other places that, you know, friends in Ohio, Roger uh, Slack up at Eldora, he hasn't been able to have an event with fans at all this year. Uh, he's had one event that was a pay-per-view event that he put together. Uh, had other race friends that uh, just decided not to even bother opening this year. And, you know, uh, I really, uh, I understand why some of them felt they had to do it or why they did it. Uh, you know, the, the regulations and the different things you all have to deal with. Uh, you have to be a good partner with your local government. Um, and some, some friends of mine had an event recently and they, uh, they succeeded with uh, some efforts in court to be able to have the event. But then days later they were getting visits by their alcohol control board and their concessions <laughs> people. And so the government found ways of making a pay. So we've been very fortunate here in that the people that we're dealing with want us to succeed. So we're, uh, 
we're going to keep uh, plugging along, play by the rules, and do what we need to do to have some racing. Was anybody in your family, your dad, or anybody in the racing at, when you were a kid? No. Uh, my grandfather, when I was about two years old, he bought me a, a toy race car. That kind of started some of this. <laughs> and then a short time later, uh, uh, my dad said he knew when we had a problem when I think I was – Three years old, we went to the drive-in theater and saw the uh, Last American Hero uh, movie, which is about Junior Johnson, yeah. and loved it. And, and then from that point on, anytime there was a race car on TV, I was watching it. Um, now, my uncle did take my mom and I to a dirt track race. Uh, I was six months old. My dad was in Vietnam. My mom was staying with her mother. A new dirt track had opened up, and mom took me to the races when I was six months old. So that was my first exposure. It was 50 years ago. And uh, at some point, somewhere along the line through that, it all stuck. And I uh, just always loved racing. Had neighbors who had uh, some cars that ran, and I'd always be hanging out at their house. And it's just kind of what kicked the door open. Well, I pretty much have the same thing. I got talked into coming down here one year. It took a three or four years to get me to come down. Uh, they televised it and was shown in a, in a mall in our area, one of the first malls in America. And one day I fell asleep. I said, well, this is a lot of fun. What happened? However, I came here in 1964, and I'm still here. I love it. The racing, I think the people are good. The drivers are good, uh, particularly in IndyCar. I think it's, it's phenomenal. And, you know, people like yourself who will take the time to explain to fans what's going on, what you have in mind, what you're doing, how they can do it, where they need to be, and you know, how to get tickets and all. I think it's great. It's, uh, so the one thing I've always said since we started dealing with the uh, IndyCar, we started hosting them here three years ago. And even before that, we, before we even signed the contract, I think Ed Carpenter was over here testing in uh, 2015. So a year before we ever signed the contract, Ed was over here uh, doing some testing. He was encouraging it. Naturally, Ed would be encouraging it because he's an oval guy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> support. But the, the great thing that I saw from the very beginning – is just we're in a lot of other forms of racing it's everybody kind of has their own agenda you know, when it comes to the drivers and the team owners and uh there's a lot of divisiveness in some of the other forms of racing when it comes to the indycar guys it's well, no matter if it's a driver or an owner whoever they all want to see their sport succeed they all take ownership of the property that's the great thing about it uh and they they do a fantastic job promoting the tracks and promoting the series um, they go above and beyond for us, and uh, that's something that's a little bit different. You know, you see in a lot of these other forms of racing, the, the driver will say yes, which, which deep down he doesn't want to, and usually a PR person will kill the, uh, the request before it actually happens. Uh, in IndyCar, everybody's trying to help, and that's one of the great things I like about it. And, you know, is it a good example? We're currently working on a project right now. The, our race weekend will be Tony Kanaan's last lap. We'll be here at our racetrack and uh, working with everybody over on his team to do something special. We're, uh, we're getting pretty aggressive on that with the commemorative ticket program that we're going to do and just all the different things that we can really do to showcase a guy who's really a legend pull it all down to it that one of the nice guys he's proof that a nice guy can win and uh, so we're going to be doing a lot to promote uh, TK the next few weeks and uh, you know more than anything as a way of saying thank you to him for his efforts of promoting the series that's a lot of times you know he, even though he is a winner on the track a lot of times it's the stuff these guys are doing who they a guy that may have never won a race but he's willing to help promote that goes a long way and we try to uh, say thank you to the drivers and the team owners as much as possible because without them, it's, it wouldn't be possible. Now you mentioned to me before we started this that a number of the drivers are coming into town a few days early to play golf. Uh, I assume you'll have some of them making appearances on sports talk shows and radio and so forth while they're here, or maybe some coming and not playing golf will do that for you. Yeah, we're working on some of those things. It's a whole new, uh, a whole new uh, program now. You know, in the past – we would grab a couple of drivers, uh, you know, Graham Rahal would come into town, he'd hop in a car and we'd buzz around to four or five radio stations and a TV station. And Well, now with all these different rules and regulations, I'll probably be taking most of the drivers into a boardroom somewhere and doing a, a Zoom conference call. That's going to be the visit or they'll be doing a lot more on the phone end side of things. Yeah, that's, that's the bad part about the, the stuff that we're having to deal with currently because our personality, the drivers are personalities. And when you get them with a uh, top 
morning DJ and they get to talk about what they're doing and explain all that, it creates a connection that that DJ continues to talk about for days and weeks after um, the appearance. So, you know, th that's going to be the one thing that's a little bit different this year is that we can't really get that full on engagement with those individuals. But, but uh, I think the efforts we've had in the past, we've done very well in our promotional uh, campaigns the last couple of years for what we're doing and what Bomberito Automotive Group does. Uh, hopefully some of that carries over. and We can still maintain the level that we, we try to accomplish here. Well, you've, you've had some good salespeople, I assume, or it could be you with the uh, worldwide technology is uh, the underwriter of the lead name on the track mm -hmm. and the Bomberito people uh, sponsoring the race. Uh, that says a lot about your group and your crew and because they've stuck with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, worldwide technology just got here, but I got to think they're happy or they might have had some problem. I always like to say our best sales guy is the guy who owns the place because in both of those relationships, it was secured through Curtis and his efforts. Uh, I always like to say that if I can get Curtis in a room with someone uh, for 10 minutes, uh, <laughs> number one, they're going to have, they're going to be friends when they leave the room. And uh, when he tells his story of how he built what he's built, what he's done here with this racetrack, you can't help but love the guy. And the, the groups like Bomberito Automotive Group and Worldwide Technology Race, where they see what he's trying to do, not only to have these events, but all, overall to help the city and the region as a whole, uh, that you don't really see in a lot of other places. Um, and he's, he's doing this for an overall uh, good that, you know, this is probably, I always like to tell him, the racetrack was probably one of his worst investments he ever made because it's been uh, eight years now of a lot of hard work. But what it's doing uh, for the community is fantastic. And that's what he looks at. He has other uh, interest in this area. And as long as the racetrack is a bright, shining light, as we seem to be, it just kind of lifts everybody's spirits and the other things that we're doing around here, whether it's the home building business or through uh, other uh, companies that we're associated with. We, everywhere we go and we're talking to the tourism groups and the chambers of commerce, uh, it, it, whether it's on the Illinois side or the Missouri side, everybody is happy with what we're doing because we are doing uh, a good job of selling the community first and foremost. That's, that's what it takes. And unfortunately, a lot of times owners and management don't realize that. And uh, it, it, it all counts and all adds up. And if you can send your owner out and have a conference with somebody and come back, back with a, a contract signed in a the, in the month or so, it's, it's a good job. <laughs> One thing about him, too, and I don't know if, if you're familiar with this or not, but uh, at each one of the IndyCar races we've had, uh, Curtis always gets in line at the end of the driver autograph row and will shake the hand of every single fan that goes through the autograph line and thank him for coming to his racetrack. And that, that just kind of shows you the commitment that he has. I don't know if we're going to get to do that this year with COVID. He'd probably have to be spraying him off with hand sanitizer. <laughs> happy but then, you know, that's the stuff that he's willing to do and it, it it's kind of a it's a trickle down approach you know it's uh it, it uh, passes down to what we're doing but it passes down to the attitude of our ticket staff and uh, you know one of the things that he emphasizes is that we, we're doing this because we want to have fun if it's ever a point where somebody's not having fun or the the overall vibe around our office uh you know you have to fit into this system and you know fitting into the system here at this racetrack uh uh, it's fairly casual. You got to be able to get along with everybody. You need to know how to have a good time when the racing's done. And, uh, you know, we, we really do put an emphasis on the family part and just, uh, you know, being ourselves and enjoying what we do. Well, that says an awful lot. And to have an owner doing the things he's doing, your employees got to look and say, huh, if he can do it, I best do it too. That's right. If he likes it, I like it. And that's great. I think, you know, the attitude, and I found – people I've talked to that work for you and so forth, you know, they're all positive and you rah, rah, which is great. I, I think it's well, phenomenal. I think, as a good example, Curtis's 15 year old son, his uh, summer project has been mowing the grass in all of our parking lots. So he uh, <laughs> a tractor mowing every day. And uh, uh, that's, that's been uh, fun having him on, as part of the team, but it leads by the same example as his dad. His dad does the same thing. He hops in and, I've seen Curtis and his uh, waiters uh, getting out uh, unplugged drains out in one of the fields and operating um, machinery around the property. You know, we all try to jump in. So there's, we never like to take the attitude there's a job beneath anybody else. We're all in it together. Well, one more time. The, the uh, 
email address or the website where to, to order tickets and the phone number. Go over that one more time. Yeah, you can get your tickets at www.raceway.com and backslash tickets. But if you just go to our main page, you can click on the link there. Uh, the phone number is 618-215-8888 and extension 106 is Taylor. And she'll be more than happy to help you. And you can follow us on social media with Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff at, at WWT Raceway. That's our uh, social handles. We try to stay pretty active on there as well. It's amazing how many people see that. Since I've been doing this, you know, you've been on at McGilvery's a couple of times. We've been doing this since, I think, March. And the number of viewers that look in is quite astounding. So it's people are listening and watching, and uh, now hopefully they'll say, geez, maybe we ought to go over to Gateway, I mean, WWT Raceway at Gateway. Um, look don't forward to your, call us, just call us your home track. That's our, our attitude there. There so. you go. Well, thanks for your time. I appreciate it and all the efforts you put in to organize everything for all the other tracks around. Seems to be working well from what I hear. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you at your event following the Indianapolis 500. Yeah, just uh, tell people, if anybody has any questions, you can also email us, uh, just email info at www.raceway.com. Any question you may have about how the seating is going to work, how traffic's going to work, any of the rules, just shoot us an email and we'll be happy to respond. It'll either be myself or Taylor that will respond to you. And uh, we'll try to do whatever we can do to make sure that if you do come to the race, you'll have the best experience you possibly can. If I'm not mistaken, you've got you've made some new ways to uh, traffic got roads in that weren't there when you first started, if I remember right. Yeah, that's correct. It's a little uh, easier to get in and out. Yeah, two years ago, uh, we expanded the West Road. Uh, Curtis made a pretty substantial investment over there. Uh, yeah. to take from a lane and a half to three full lanes. And uh, even since last year, we've expanded our parking lot more. So we now have an additional uh, 19 acres of uh, gravel lots that he's put in over there as well, in addition to what we've been doing through the last couple of years. So the footprint keeps getting bigger. So, it, you know, everything we uh, we bring in and then some, he's putting it back into developing the facility. So it's, uh, uh, we want every, his goal is that every time people come back, they see something improved. And that's what we try to keep working on each year. Well, that's good. I thank you for your time. Look forward to seeing you uh, upcoming. What, what's the date of the race? It's August 29th and 30th, so we yep. get an IndyCar race on Saturday and an IndyCar race on Sunday. So it's uh, now is worth the time. Oh, Dom, one thing I did not mention, uh, due to everything that's going on with the COVID, we did have to cancel the bus trip from Indy. Uh, so we reached out to all those fans last week. It will return next year. Uh, you know, we wanted to try to make it happen. It's just with all the new rules and regulations, it was going to be impossible. But, uh, you know, we encourage the fans, if you can, to carpool with a family member, come on down and see us. Uh, and, uh, again, we'll be, uh, we'll be returning that program next year. So just uh, apologize to all the fans that had already purchased. We, uh, we gave everybody the option of either rolling over or doing a refund when it came to that. But uh, hopefully next year we'll be having up and running again. One quickie, how about motels? Are there motel rooms available still? That's one of the great things about all this going on right now with the Cardinals not hosting fans and uh, a lot of people being fairly re reluctant on coming and doing some of the touristy things that they used to do. There's lots of great hotels available. Uh, our partner, LHM Hotel Group, uh, they've got lots of rooms. Drury Hotel has. There's a new Lowe's Hotel uh, in downtown St. Louis that uh, uh, we actually have a diehard race fan who's one of their booking uh, supervisors over there and especially <laughs> coordinators so uh they're they're diehard indycar fans so but so if you'll go to our website www.raceway.com there's fan info and we have links to all of our hotel partners so you can get hotel rooms and we encourage everybody to come in and uh, come in early saturday and stay uh through sunday evening or stay longer if you want we're going to have the uh the vintage guys uh will be on track uh, during the day on friday that's going to be a free event for anybody that wants to come out and watch them uh, then the, we're also going to have them on track again Sunday. Uh, lots of activities. It's a full weekend schedule with uh, IndyCar and ARCA on uh, Saturday, NASCAR trucks and IndyCar on Sunday. It's a great weekend, uh, perfect time to get away and come on down and visit us for a while. Yeah, come on down Friday, watch. Uh, that's Mike Lashmitz group, I think, uh, uh, yep. Indy Vintage Registry. So they'll be there. They got some great cars. That's fun to watch. Uh, 
Yeah, they've already filled out their roster too. He sent me a note just a couple of days ago that registration's closed because they're full. So they've uh, looks like they've got a great turnout for that event. So we're excited about. It. I hope you sell every ticket you can that the the uh, CDC or whoever regulates that will allow you to. And look forward to your event. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And one of these days, you'll be surprised. There'll be another, and it'll be me knocking on your door. There you go. Well, one of these days, we're going to go back to having this at the bar in Indy, and I'll make a drive up. I want to be one of, your <laughs> first guests. one of the first guests when you're back at the bar. I'm coming up, okay? Good. And when you see the place, you'll go, holy smoke, look at this. They completely change it. Really looks good. Thanks for your time, Chris. Look forward to your event. All right. Thanks, Don. We'll see you. Okay. My guest has been the Vice President and General Manager of Worldwide Technology Raceway, formerly known as Gateway. He's got an upcoming event, and it's a double header. So get yourself together and get over there. He said there's plenty of hotel rooms. So get over there. You'll have a great event, great time, and they really do put on a nice, uh, nice place to visit. We have some more guests lined up, and we'll be back again. Uh, you'll see an email or on Facebook of what's going on, who, and so forth. Until the next time we see you, this is Don Kay saying thanks for watching. See you again.